Hey babe, how's your day going? Oh, hi. Not great. Awful, actually. Oh no. Tell me why. Ugh. The bistro was out of that shrimp appetizer I like. It's been downhill ever since. Ah, oh, honey. I'm so sorry. I know how much you like it. Yeah. It's been a very tiring day. That was just the start of it. I'm so sorry to hear that. Actually, it all started when I couldn't find my favorite jacket. Oh. Yes. Oh, it's the same old problem. That nasty little condo is so small, Henry. Lily, I'm working on it. Yeah, well, maybe you're not working hard enough. Babe, when am I not working? I mean, today's Saturday, and I am working. If you're going to use that tone, maybe we should stop texting right now. Okay, hold on. I get it that you're having a bad day, but you're not being fair. Actually, there is something I need to tell you. Okay, great. Go ahead. I couldn't find my jacket because there's absolutely no closet space in that tiny condo. I know you don't like the closets. You tell me often enough. Do you know how terrible it is for me to have to go through boxes of my clothes just to find the things I like? I know it's a hassle. Can you just let it go for now? I'm not used to this. I'm not used to living out of boxes like some homeless person. Lily, come on. We're not exactly homeless. Well, that condo is about as close as you can get. I'm not sure that's a very realistic assessment. Those are some big words. Sounds like law school's finally paying off. For your vocabulary, at least. Whoa. Why are you being so vicious? Hold on a second. I texted you because I have some good news. I have news too, but this day has been so distracting. Tell me your news. What else went wrong? Well, fine. Okay, so I was only 35 minutes late to my manicure, and they made me wait 17 minutes to get served. Oh, really? Can you imagine 17? I set a timer on my phone. It was unbelievable, making me wait like that? I'm one of their best customers. I know, I know you are. What does that mean? Nothing. I just know you like going there. What are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything. I just know how much you like getting your nails done. You're inferring that I spend too much money on my nails? Baby, I'm not implying anything. Wait, now you're giving me a hard time about using infer instead of imply, aren't you? No! You're telling me I'm stupid, Mr. Know-it-all law school boy. Wow. You are really in a killer mood, aren't you? Yeah, well, I've got some news for you. You're going to love what I'm inferring, Henry. Okay, but wait. I have great news too. That's why I texted you. Oh yeah? Yes. Guess what? I don't have time for games. Okay. Maybe we should talk later. I know you've had a bad day. You're telling me I'm being unreasonable? You're telling me I'm being dramatic and sensitive? You don't want to text with me until I calm down? I didn't say any of that. Come on. You sound just like my father. It's not like that. It's not? Because it certainly sounds like it. Are you doing this on purpose? Doing what? Triggering me. What? You're pushing my buttons. You're trying to make me angry. Okay, let's step back a minute. You step back. You know the problems I've had with my father. Now you're basically echoing his words. You're bringing all of it back up on me, and I really don't appreciate it. I think maybe we should talk a bit later. That's exactly what he used to do. Bring something up? Upset me? Then tell me he won't talk about it. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for digging all of that up for me. Babe. Don't babe me. I told you when we met. I told you all about the issues I had with my father, and here you are repeating them. You're going too far. Just hang on. I texted you because I have a really nice surprise for you. A gift. A gift? 
I did something really big today. For you. What is it? I'm on my way to Sherry's house for afternoon drinks. I don't really have time for this. Okay, so remember the promise I made to you when we got back from our honeymoon last month? I remember lots of promises you made. I also remember you not delivering on any of them. Like buying us a proper house, so I don't have to live in that tiny condominium anymore? Living out of boxes? This again? Come on. I'm working on it, Lily. You know I am. That's why I'm in the office right now on a Saturday. I'm saving every penny and working like a dog 80 hours a week so we can buy a house you like. Honestly, a little acknowledgement of that would be great. I should have listened to my mother. Well, she's kind of the reason I'm texting. She is? Do you remember the promise I made about your mother? Which one? Like I said, there were lots of promises. Okay, here's my surprise. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready for this surprise, whatever it is. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sitting down? I'm driving, Henry. Just spit it out. I did it. I bought your mother the new car. It's about time now. Don't come home. Huh? Don't come home. I changed the locks on that nasty little rat trap of a condo. What? Is this a joke? You don't like what I'm inferring? L-O-L. Okay, it is a joke. You had me there for a minute. It's not a joke. I saw the car when I left home. You couldn't even afford the convertible like she wanted. You have to be kidding. That's your reaction to me buying a car for your mother? For real? It's a brand new car. She wanted the convertible model. You are way out of line. What kind of guy buys a car for his mother-in-law? Are you listening to yourself? Fine. When I get home, we can go back to the dealership and Her Majesty can choose the ones she wants. You're not coming home. That little shoebox is not your home anymore. I'm putting it on the market. What? I'm selling it. I'm divorcing you. Are you being serious right now? You told me we wouldn't have to live in that condo once we were married. I told you I'd work hard and save up to buy a house. And that's exactly what I've been doing. Give me a break. I've had it. All my friends poke fun at that condo. And your job. And my car. I've sacrificed so much. I can't take it anymore. You've sacrificed? You? I could have married Chase. I could have moved into his house. It's a mansion. You're really bringing up Chase again? I made a big mistake. My mother always told me it was a mistake to marry you. I should have listened. What do you mean you changed the locks? What do you think it means, genius? You're the one in law school. You figure it out. Lily, this isn't funny if it's a joke. I tried, Henry. I really tried. You really changed the locks? You can't even screw in a light bulb. I had somebody do it. And that's a really mean thing to say. I never should have married you. My God! You're serious! You can't take care of my needs. Needs? Not everyone needs to day drink and get their nails done seven times a week. How dare you? I'm coming home right now. You won't get in. I have a lawyer. What? It's my uncle. Your mother's brother? That shark? He'd eat his own young for a snack. Well, now he's going to eat you for breakfast. Yum yum. I can't believe you. I gave you the best years of my life and you throw them away your best years you're only 22 i've been working my butt off every day since we met trying to make more money for you and your outlandish tastes honestly i think you're going to be an awful lawyer just terrible you don't have a killer instinct you're like a child soft you'll never be successful 
And now you blame me for being born into money? That condo is mine. You better ask my uncle about that. Okay, so maybe it's ours, but we need to split anything that comes from its sale. No, we don't. Ask my uncle. You're a demon. I only want what's fair. After all, the emotional abuse you put me through. What? Of course. That's your uncle? That I emotionally abused you? You can talk to my attorney about it. You're unbelievable. I'm taking that car back right now, you witch. See? The name calling. It hurts. And it's too late. About the car. Mommy already sold it. What? It was her gift. She didn't like it, so she sold it for cash. Are you kidding me? It's going to take years for me to pay that car off. She didn't even get much for it. Oh, well. You're absolutely the worst person I've ever met. Next to your mother, maybe. See? Emotional abuse. Now you say you're going back to Chase. He always loved me. He also understands what it means to have a woman like me. What it takes to keep her happy. Endless money and gifts. You mean. Appreciation. Chase appreciates me. He always has. Chase was the dumbest guy in high school. How dare you say that? You know it's true. You've said the same thing to me many times. Dumb old Chase. It's not nice to throw words in someone's face. You never said it? That Chase is dumb? It's okay that Chase isn't so bright. Because he comes from money. I'd rather be rich than smart. Look at you. You're smart. You got a scholarship to law school. But you haven't made any real money. I'm still in law school. How could I make real money yet, you harpy? A real man would have figured that out. I can't take those closets. Those dirty old boxes with all my clothes in them. I can't take it. You can't make a woman like me live that way. You told me we would have children together. Does that mean anything to you? I can't bring children into such a meager household. It wouldn't be fair to them. Fair? You're talking like we're in poverty. We live in a three-bedroom condo in a nice neighborhood. We're not destitute. I want my children to have things I didn't. What are you talking about? Your parents spoiled you rotten. There wasn't a single thing you wanted that they didn't get for you. How dare you? See, this is what I'm talking about. Emotional abuse. You're too much. You're heartless. What was I thinking marrying you? You'll never make me happy. Nothing will make you happy. I didn't ask for much, Henry. A closet I can put a few things in. That's all. Is it too much? Only a queen would complain about those closets. The truth is, they're huge. See, that's the thing. I am a queen. I deserve to be treated that way. I've treated you so well. Everything I've done has been for you. You know that. It's not enough. You're not enough. Lily, let's just take a minute. I don't want it to end like this. It's too late. I want to have children with you. I don't want my children to be cursed with a father like you. You think Chase will be a great father? Yes. And you're prepared to hire them? Tutors starting in kindergarten. What? Chase is so dumb. You won't be able to help them with their kindergarten homework. You know that. You're so petty. You're a very small man, Henry. You know it's true. I don't care. You don't care that Chase is as dumb as a rock? It doesn't matter. Because his family is rich? You never understood what really matters. Brains don't matter? Love doesn't matter? He loves me. And he's dumb as a rock. Yes, yes, okay. Chase is as dumb as a rock. He is. Is that what you want to hear? He's so stupid. 
he could get locked in a bathroom and pee his pants. Yes, it's true. He's the stupidest man I've ever met. That's not why I'm divorcing you for him. Then why? You know why. You're smart. He's stupid. He's rich. You're poor. You figure it out. Good luck with your stupid kids then. Chase gets it. He understands a woman like me and my needs. You mean the need to spend thousands of dollars a day? It's called living a life one is accustomed to. Don't blame me that my family made something of themselves. Lily, I'm giving you one last chance. You're giving me one last chance? Don't do this. You'll regret it. No, I won't. I still love you. I always have. You have your issues. But so do we all. I've always loved you and I always will. Do you remember the night we got engaged? Don't. You remember the waves? The way the moon reflected on the water? I'm not saying we didn't have some good times. We had the best times. The best times of my life. It's not enough. It is. Just give it five more years. I'll finish law school, work my butt off as an associate, then open my own practice. This has always been the plan. You know that. Things change. But we have a plan. It's just taking too long. I can't take it anymore. I bought your mother that car just like I promised. I don't care that she sold it. That's okay. It's hers and she can do what she wants with it. Yes, of course, that's true. But I can't take it anymore. She berates me every day about you. She does? Ever since we got engaged. I didn't know that. She reminds me of Chase every single day. Oh. How much money Chase's family has. How big his house is. Yeah, okay. She even mentioned it today as she drove up to the car dealership. What? What did she say? She said, Chase would have gotten the convertible. I see, it's hard. It's hard for me to take all that. Okay. Day after day. She's my mother, you know. So she never liked me? No. So you see why I'm doing what I'm doing? No. No? No. You're a grown woman, Lily. You don't need to listen to your mother anymore. Till death do us part. That's what we said. You don't understand. I haven't changed. I promised you that I would work my ass off every day until I provided for you the life you wanted. And that's exactly what I've been doing. It's not enough. When you asked me to buy your mother a car, I thought it was a lot to ask. It is a lot to ask. It's insane actually. But still, I agreed to it. You're not listening. I told you that you meant everything in the world to me. And I would sacrifice everything for you. And that we would have a family together. And I would give absolutely everything I had for those children too, didn't I? You did. Don't do this. It's making me feel very bad. And I've kept my word about all of it. Haven't I? Haven't I, Lily? You have. Please stop. So tell me now, it's just you and me, not your mom, not your friends, just you and me. Like the old days when we first met, we were so in love, weren't we? We were. And we thought we would be together forever, right? We did. And we thought love was all we needed, that it was enough and that we would stick together until we made it together, right? Yes. But I just can't do it anymore. Are you sure? I am. You're giving up on us? Because your mother is making you? And because you can't wait with me and you need to have the big house right now with Chase? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. You're giving up on love and you're going to divorce the man you love to marry a man you think is stupid just so you can live in comfort? Henry, I'm sorry. I'm crying right now. Really, I'm sorry. 
He always had a way with words. But yes, it's all true. Like you say it, yes. That's too bad, Lily. Chase is going to be so disappointed. What do you mean? Chase will finally have me. He wanted me since high school. Are you sure? What do you mean? Here, give me a second. What are you doing? What's that? What are you doing? Is that what I think it is? Wait. Here's the real winner. It's okay. That chase is dumb because he comes from money. <laughs> Just a little copy-paste. You wouldn't. Huh? I wouldn't? Why not? This is a private conversation. Not for long, my friend. You tricked me. This whole time you were apologizing to me? You were just baiting a trap? Maybe you were right about one thing. Maybe I have a way with words after all. Oh my god. Maybe I will make an okay lawyer though. Maybe you're wrong about that. It looks like I do have a killer instinct after all. <laughs> Don't do it. Do you still love me? Actually, I did. Right up until this conversation. Don't do it. Please, I'm begging you. I used to love you. Now I just want you to get what you deserve. I'll be sending Chase and his family this thread. The whole thing. They can decide how badly they still want you to be a part of their family. Don't! Henry! No! Lily, I hope whichever man you end up with is just a terrible, terrible person. That's the only kind of man that deserves you. Goodbye. After that, Lily called her mother right away and then did exactly what her mother told her to do. She called Chase and told him Henry was going crazy. He was lying and spreading awful rumors about her. Lily told Chase that Henry might do something insane. Like create a totally fake text thread and then send it to Chase. Chase was, not surprisingly, dumb enough to believe it. So when Henry sent the exact copy of this thread to Chase, Chase ignored it. He told Lily he loved her and would support her and marry her. And they would have a beautiful life together. You can imagine how relieved Lily and her mother were. The problem, of course, was that Chase's father was not so gullible. Henry sent the thread to Chase's father, and of course, deep down, Chase's father knew the truth about his son. He also had heard great things about Henry, the bright young law student, and he had known Lily long enough to have a feeling about exactly what type of person she was too. It didn't take Henry too long to get over Lily. The divorce went smoothly, and although Henry did lose that car and half the value of the condo he had to sell, he soon met and fell in love with another student at his law school. She and Henry had a lot in common. Within a few years, they started their law practice together, started raising a family, and really did live their dream life. Chase's father was sure to tell the story of his son's nearly disastrous decision to marry such an awful woman to all his friends. Soon enough, all the people with money in the whole city knew exactly what Lily and her mother were like. Lily did eventually find a husband. He was twice her age, couldn't have children, and married Lily on one condition, that her mother could never live with them. Hannah, you were out of the hospital today. Yes. I'm just getting ready. I'm working so I can't pick you up. You can go home by yourself, right? Mom will pick me up. She told me to come straight home. Oh, what? I didn't hear anything about that. I just got the call. Mom and Dad are mad at you about the burns. They said the scars on my face will last forever, so... Don't feel bad about that. I didn't do it on purpose. I know that. Right? It's your fault that sitting in the wrong place in the first place. You blame me? You're the one who sat with your legs out while people were carrying pots and pans. It's disturbing, isn't it? I was just sitting there as usual. It's not like I was in a weird place. 
I think Leo was carrying it while watching TV and tripped over it. No. It was because you were in the way. I mean, your relatives annoy me. Your relatives annoy me. Annoying? Why? They want me to divorce you. Your father even grabbed me. Isn't that a crime? Why am I getting blamed for this? My parents told me to get a divorce too. They've been telling me for a while. What? Since when? Soon after we got married. Why? People got worried. After watching our conversation and stuff like that. Conversation? People would ask me, Is your husband always this cold? They thought I was being treated badly by you. Seems like everyone was thinking of it. What the hell is that? What did I do? You're so quick to make fun of me. Not only my relatives, but also my friends. They're all saying whatever they want. You call me stupid and useless. Isn't it true? You're a defective woman who can't even do decent housework. So you were joining them and saying bad things about me behind my back too. I don't understand why I'm being blamed for that. No matter how to me, I had no intention of leaving you. But this time, I understand what the parents are saying. Every time I look in the mirror, I feel sad. My relatives say they forced me to get a divorce. I see. I don't care if we get a divorce. I don't. If I saw your face right now, I would be turned off. Turned off? Because you look like a monster. I'd be scared to death if I saw you at night. And it's just weird to be with you. If I can get a divorce, it's just a good time. A monster? I can't live with a woman who looks like that. I wouldn't even want to spend the night with you. If I can't see you as a woman, what's the point of being married to you? I was burned because of your carelessness. You think it's not your fault that I look like this? But then you dump me without taking any responsibility? Your relatives want a divorce too. If that's what you want, so be it. You said it's a good time. You were going to get a divorce even if my family didn't tell you to. Well, I can't deny that possibility. Your face is so ugly right now. How dear. How can you say such a terrible thing? What do you think I am? Well, you're mad at me too, right? Then you don't have to force yourself to stay in the marriage, do you? Let's go our separate ways. Well, you're already completely willing to separate. Then there's no point in talking anymore. When you take your stuff, sign the divorce papers while you're at it. It's too much work to mail it. Oh, you'll have to get the divorce papers. I feel like an idiot. Now I understand what my parents were saying. I don't know why I hung on to someone like you. Hey, how are you? It's been a while. What, Leo? It's been five years since then. What's going on? You haven't contacted me since the divorce. Has anything happened? Well, I haven't talked to you in a while, so I thought I'd give you a call. Make it quick. What's with the attitude? I contacted you for the first time in a long time, so you should be happy for more. Why should I? So, what do you want to talk about? That's a story that makes you happy. Happy about what? I called you because I'm thinking of remarrying you. You're probably still single anyway. How's that sound? Happy? What do you mean? I thought you didn't like my face. Why are you asking me to remarry now? Actually, I got an illness. I've got diabetes and all that stuff. I go to the hospital every week. You've had a rough life. I knew you were going to get ill someday. I didn't have a rough life. You were the type that didn't eat, only drink. And you drink a lot. It's the worst for you, right? Well, that's alright. I want a wife so bad right now. What? I've been with a lot of different women over the past five years. But they all ran away. They're all a mess, aren't they? 
That's because you don't treat women well. What's wrong with me? You have nothing but bad things to say. What do you mean you want a wife when you get ill? You want your wife to take care of you? It's hard when I'm fighting the illness alone. You know, these are things I want you to buy for me while I'm in the hospital. Besides, there's always personal care and stuff. You must be mistaken in women for housekeepers or something. Marriage partners aren't that convenient. You've been with a lot of people in your life. Why are you telling me this? You're just perfect for that. And now that I think about it, you have the most guts. But we're already divorced. But you can't get married forever anyway. Forever? You look like a monster. No man would marry you with a face like that. So I'll take you back for it. I'm so sweet, aren't I? Why would I remarry you? My parents and relatives won't allow it. They wanted to divorce you for five years ago. There's no way they let you remarry. That being said, it's better than being single all the time. If they don't, if they don't like it, just cut them off. I don't want to do that. Why not? I hate your relatives because they annoy me. Cut them off. They are my dearest relatives. I'm not going to cut them off. And I'm not remarrying you. Why not? It's not a bad deal for you either. You don't want to be single forever. I'm a wiser man now. I'm not the same person I was then. I will not remarry you who do not care for me. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not in a position to choose. If you miss this opportunity, you'll never get married. I don't want to go back to my old life. I'd rather be single forever than remarry you. What the hell, man? I'm telling you this in good faith. How can I remarry someone who calls me a monster? You haven't changed at all since five years ago. You think I'm an idiot. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what's not good about you. Don't be so silly. Just get married again. Just come back to me. I won't. If you don't do what I say, you'll pay for it. Pay for it. I'll find your house and I'll ambush you. Until you shake your head. Well... You remember I've been boxing all my life, right? You're so easy to twist. Are you threatening me? I'm telling you to realize what you're up against. Don't turn me down for being a monster. Don't get cocky or I'll kick your ass. Why you want to remarry so badly? But I can't decide right now. I have to explain this to relatives, so please give me more time. Okay. I'll call you tomorrow. Tomorrow? That's too soon. Give me three days. I don't have a choice. I'll call you in three days. I'm counting on you. Well, it's been three days. Let me hear your answer. You only have one choice, though. Right. There's only one option. I will not remarry you. You're still saying that? That's the only way to think about it, right? I can't conclude that I will remarry you. You're still single, right? Why don't you grow up and remarry me? There's no one who will take a defective woman with a face like a monster. Or are you going to be single and lonely for the rest of your life? I have a message for you. From who? From those annoying relatives? You don't have to come to work from tomorrow. What? Where that message comes from? My husband. I hear you're being fired. Husband? What do you mean fired? The executives at your company promised my husband that they would fire you, so I guess you could just say your boss gave me a message. Wait a minute. Husband? My company? What the hell have you been saying all this time? I never said I was single, did I? That I could never remarry? It's just your imagination. What's my imagination? There's no way a woman like you can get married. Do you understand what you were talking about? Unfortunately, I already married again three years ago. He was a student of my father's when he was a professor. No way. I was surprised too. Three days ago, I told my husband about your threats. 
He was so furious, he did some research to sue you. And it turns out you're an employee of one of our clients. You've got to be kidding me. That's a big client. I can think of a few companies off the top of my head. I don't know anything about the CEO. We know everything now. So my husband told your company. The people at your company were in panic. If my husband cancels a contract with your company, that's a big problem, right? That would probably be bad. I heard it would cost tens of millions of dollars in damages. Well, I'm sure they will be in a panic. If it goes wrong, the company falls apart. I didn't threaten anyone. To sue me is going too far. You said if I didn't remarry, you'd kick my ass. That's a fine threat. I filed a damage report. You're overreacting. We're an ex-couple. If I say something that goes a little too far, let it go. What's up with being an ex-husband and wife? I have a very painful past. I've suffered a lot because of you. This threat is not to be ignored this time. The spread on my face is your fault. You didn't do it on purpose. Because of your carelessness. And you called me a monster. Isn't that an insult or slander? My husband says he'll never forgive you, but says he'll beat the shit out of you. But that doesn't mean he won't file a damage report and tell the company. That's a bit much. I think your company would be happy to get rid of you rather than break the relationship with my husband's company. Threaten the wife of the CEO of an important business partner. That means it's an act that's very detrimental to the company's interests. Isn't that reason enough to fire you? Wait a minute. I've been getting a lot of calls from the company. Seriously? Yeah, right? They're serious. I don't know what's going to happen to my life. Happen to my life. I don't want to be unemployed or have an ex-conviction record. If you want me to drop the claim, you'll have to settle the case. I won't drop the claim until you pay me the fee I'm demanding. You don't have a choice. I heard you've officially been fired. So the company cut you off after all. I knew it. Thanks to you, I'm unemployed. What am I going to do now? I'm fighting an illness, so it's hard to find a job. Who would hire a person with a serious illness on a full-time basis? You'll just have to do your best to find out. You said it's just like it's somebody else's problem. Well, it's none of your business. My husband won't hold your company responsible any longer. It's your fault, not theirs. But he won't drop the case against you personally. I've been fired, so I have had enough payback. I also have a burn mark against you. This can't possibly be enough. Are you really that Hannah? You've changed completely. She used to be so quiet and gentle. Since I remarried my husband, I've changed. I've become more confident in myself. I can express my feelings better now than when I was with you. Hannah, I'm sorry. My attitude was wrong. Are you finally going to apologize? It's too late for an apology. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry I forced you to remarry. But I was ill and I couldn't have enough room either. You need to understand that. Using illness as an excuse? In fact, my illness is serious. I'm treating, but instead of getting better, it's getting worse and worse. It's more painful than anything else. I lost my mind and I just made a heartless comment. This isn't the first time that you've made heartless comments. Even before you got ill, you were a terrible person. The only reason you are the worst person is that your nature is corrupt and not because of the illness. Was I that bad? You never understand it anyway. You don't really feel sorry for what you did. You just want me to drop the lawsuit. That's not true. As your ex-wife, I understand your character. You will never be rehabilitated. The real monster is you, with your ugly heart. My ex-husband paid $20,000 in alimony and we settled. He has been laid off from the company and flat broke. He can't work long hours because his illness is getting worse and worse. And because of that, he can't seem to find a job. A year after the divorce, I heard a rumor that her ex-husband has been told his life expectancy is limited. Now that time has passed, I don't know if he's alive or dead. But I don't think I want to know. My husband and I still get along with each other. When I'm with him, I don't care about the scars on my face. I have found true love.